What's up? How are you guys this week? Another Monday down at Frankie's Free Range Meat. And I feel like I should be more excited. But at this point, I guess I'm just completely over it. I've been talking about eggs and dairy for years and years and years, uh, trying to get them on Frankie's Free Range Meat since we started. And today's the day. We officially have eggs. I mean, last week was a complete nightmare, and we'll get into that later. But uh, we will have them available on the website. It's going to be 12 dozen eggs and you're gonna pay about $105 and that includes shipping. So it, it's about what you would pay at Whole Foods for their pasture raised eggs, but ours are corn and soy free. No supermarket I'm aware of sells corn and soy free eggs. It's much more expensive to do. It's much higher quality and there's also no fish meal in it. So, you know, there is a concern with ocean pollution and that stuff, but these are basically the cleanest eggs I know about on the market right now. Uh, Frankie'sFreeRangeMeat.com. Please order them separately if you can. So place an order for the eggs and then place your meat order separately. If you combine them, I can separate them, but keep in mind the eggs will be sent separately without ice. Since these eggs are not like bleached or washed or any of that stuff, they can be left at room temperature for very, very long periods of time for two or three months. Obviously not if it's super duper hot, but uh, we have them. So we'll see how that goes over the next two or three weeks. And then we can adjust accordingly, see how you guys like it. If we need to change things up, who knows? Hopefully the, the dairy follows soon after. So uh, we're going to take a quick look around and then I'll uh, tell you guys what happened last week. But um, I did have to refund quite a few orders for you guys. Uh, the replacement part we got for the bar machine to make the best bars and the pemmican and stuff. It wasn't the right size and the machine isn't working. So uh, we've been unable to get those products back in stock. I'm going to a machine shop today to see if we can try to grind the part down and fix it. But um, I'm not too happy about that. Hopefully uh, I get that fixed in a day or two and then we can get things back in production because we are out of all the bars, guys. I think we just have a few chocolate best bars left, but no pemmican, no vanilla, no berry. We haven't been able to make the new granola bars I've been wanting to do. And I think you guys have been buying all the water keeper on frankiesrangefoods.com. So hopefully, hopefully we're back in check in, in about two or three weeks. So I guess I'm glad I didn't get rid of this commercial refrigerator. We got the eggs in here, guys. I'm keeping them around uh, 55, 60 degrees just because this warehouse fluctuates in temperature. I'm gonna show you guys a clip of me opening these up at home, but this is the carton they come in. And the box you guys get is going to look somewhat like this. I got to get a slightly smaller box, but it's going to be custom fit uh, to the 12 dozen eggs. So it should be nice and snug and we shouldn't have any problems with them breaking. Oh, also guys, we restocked all the cheeses this week. So we have every cheese back in stock. If there's a cheese we don't sell, you guys might be interested in, please let me know. So I was actually contemplating buying a ticket to Medellin, Colombia after what happened last week because it, it was just so ridiculous. So. I contacted a freight company about two weeks ago to pick the eggs up from the farmer. They said they could do it uh, last Tuesday morning. So I assumed everything was good. You know, I scheduled with the dispatch. They confirmed they were going to pick up Tuesday morning. And then later that day at 7 p.m., the farmer calls me. They're Amish, so they don't, they don't pick up their phone. They don't have a phone. I can't contact them. No email and stuff. So I find out at 7 p.m. that day, farmer calls me. All he says is, Hey, Frank, your guy didn't show up. He didn't sound too happy. I was like, you know, I was, I was very uh, kind of worried and upset because first business relationship with this guy, trucker just doesn't show up, doesn't say anything. So it's 7 p.m. on a Tuesday night, and I'm trying to call up the dispatch company and get a hold of some of the trucking company to find out what happened. Uh, I eventually find out, oh, well, you didn't send us your credit application, so we didn't pick up. I've done business with dozens of freight companies. I've never had someone require a credit application to pick up the product. Never, not once. And they didn't say when scheduling the dispatch, oh, before we go, we need the credit application. They didn't say that. They just said, okay, we'll pick it up Tuesday, early morning confirmed. So next morning, Wednesday morning, I get on the phone with the guy. I say, hey, look, I'm sorry. I just sent the credit application over right now. Uh, can you please do a pickup today? The farmer has the eggs ready for me. He's waiting. The guy, guy was very unprofessional. I'm going to be a gentleman and I'm not going to name the company, but the way they treated me and the way they handled the situation nothing short of ridiculous nothing short of completely ridiculous um i said okay look i'm not going to name the company if i can get the eggs to me this week i won't do that if, if i don't get the eggs this week and it's a nightmare maybe I'll, I'll, I'll warn people about them but so 
So next day, Wednesday, I'm calling up a few guys that had vans that I found online. And one of the guys says, okay, confirmed 100%. We're going to go to the farm Thursday morning. We're going to pick up the eggs. We're going to bring them to you. So I, I said, okay, I go to sleep Wednesday night. Wake up Thursday morning, 8, 9 a.m. Text the guy. Hey, is your guy at the farm? Don't get a response. About a half hour later, I call the guy. Not picking up his phone, so I'm like, Jesus Christ. And I told the farmer, I'm going to get another guy to come Thursday morning. I told the farmer, another guy's coming. And now in my head, oh, this guy's not going to show up too. So I'm on the phone with all the freight companies to find another one for an emergency pickup. I found one. I found the trucking company that wanted to do an emergency pickup. And, and it wasn't a refrigerated truck, and that's fine because the eggs are okay at room temperature. And I convinced the dispatch to do it. I was like, look, it's eggs. It's fine. It doesn't have to be refrigerated. Just put it on the truck. Bring it over to me the next day. It'll be fine. Trucker shows up for the emergency pickup at the farm very quickly, which is amazing. I was like, all right, finally, we're going to do this. Trucker doesn't want to take the eggs on his truck. Then I call the farmer up later. I explain to him the first guy canceled. I tried to get that guy. They didn't want to do it. Complete nightmare. So I spend the whole day Friday on the phone with an, trying to find another trucking company that can do it. And one of them did. It was, it was way more expensive and way more than I should have paid. But the guy went, picked up the next day, Saturday morning. And we got the eggs here um, Saturday afternoon, just in time for this week. So we'll have the boxes. We'll have everything ready. Uh, but, but that's just an example of the, the nonsense I have to deal with, guys. It's, it's, just, it's just not worth it. It's what, like... If I had the money to start to have my own property and my own farm and all this infrastructure like every other business has, I wouldn't be having a, a stroke every week doing this stuff. Huh? You know, it, it, it's just, and it gets me thinking, you know, hey, I'm not in the club. All these people are. Is, is it even feasible to try to operate a business under those conditions where everyone's out to get you? But anyway, we have eggs. I'm in contact with a few meat suppliers to try to get uh, some things back in stock. We, we should have the beef liver back next week, although we have lamb liver in the meantime for you guys. We should have some marrow bones coming in. We should have a few things coming in. Uh, you guys have been buying the roast beef, so I'm trying to keep up with making it. Maybe we'll do the roast ribeye this week too. So I did a price reduction for you guys on the Angus beef. I'm actually losing money on it. But, you know, since we have the a la carte stuff and you guys can kind of buy whatever you want, people prefer that over the, the package. Uh, last week, we restocked some of the filet mignon tenderloin steaks for you guys. We got ribeye back in stock as well i don't think i showed you guys the cod liver oil is in dropper bottles now i thought that was a little better for the product we got the veal testicles back in stock in addition to the goat testicles that we have i'm trying to get beef i'm trying to get lamb back but it's kind of hard guys so we did run out of a lot of things this week and uh instead of the 80 20 ground beef moving forward we're gonna have 80 20 ground shuck it might be a little more expensive but we'll see if it's worth it Hopefully the uh, eggs can make up a little bit for the lost revenue. But the idea behind the eggs is that, you know, it hopefully brings more customers in to buy meat. Thing is, <laughs> I have to do the eggs separately now, so it doesn't make much sense. If I'm telling you guys that you have to order the eggs separately from the meat, the, you know, but I'll see how it goes. You know, it's just like these are, are little things that help me, you know, make a profit on the business and hopefully I can grow to the point that I can expand to a new location because if I didn't have all this stuff, guys, if I wasn't doing water kefir, if I didn't have Frankie's Strange Foods, if I didn't have organ supplements, I, you know, I'd be dead in the water on the meat company. Th those other companies have kind of, the revenue has helped keep it afloat and, and make things reasonable. Let me show you guys the new Wi-Fi shielding products. I spoke about these last week. This is the smart meter cover. So you put this on outside and it will block the signal from pulsating which can be a very high EMF device. We also have the aluminum router guards, and depending on the strength of your router, this will either completely block or just reduce the signal. So you can still use the Wi-Fi with this on it if the Wi-Fi is turned on. If you turn the Wi-Fi off on the router and just want some reassurance, this is good too. I have it in my house. But if you have a really powerful router, uh, we also have some bags that I'm going to show you. I'll show you guys the bags next week. But what you can do is you can put a bag on the router and then you can put this cage over the bag. So you have like double shielding protection on a, a high radiation router. And I showed you guys this too. These are the, the grounding rods. You can put this in your backyard outside in the ground, run the wire through a window and then attach the ground to yourself with our wrist strap. And the wrist strap, this can also be plugged into the bottom of an electrical outlet. 
However, um, usually the ground in your house is, uh, is, is filled with dirty electricity, so it's ideal to ground outside. Now you can't really ground in a city or like a populated suburban environment. Uh, and then you'll need the other EMF devices like the router guard, the smart meter cover to, to shield yourself. And we're going to have uh, some stuff coming in probably in like three or four weeks. We're going to have the bed canopies back in stock. We're going to have some like under bed sheets to block the underneath. That's something you guys have been asking me. Uh, we're going to have kind of like a Wi-Fi shielding tent that doesn't have to be hung from a canopy. Uh, so I'm, I'm pretty excited. We, we're also trying to restock the fabrics to, uh, to make the t-shirts and stuff. So there's been a little lull for like two months. We're out of kind of stuff on the Wi-Fi shielding besides the, the, the full sleeve sweatshirt and sweatpants that I've been wearing. But hopefully that comes back soon. Frankie's Naturals is, is looking okay. I, I have to get the deodorant back in stock and we're gonna be doing like a, a four ounce uh, portion instead on the Frankie's Naturals. And we're gonna charge a little more so you get more for what you're paying, but it's just gonna be easier uh, on the production end. Haven't heard back from the butcher. I'm gonna to try to get a hold of him or write him a letter this week to see how the, how the sausages and the hot dogs are, are going, if he has time for that. Uh, we should have a, a, might have a new chicken supplier in the next two or three weeks as well, just a slightly better fee than the one we're currently using. So that's also something to look forward to. And, and guys, if you guys buy a lot of these eggs and, and I can sell a lot of volume, I should be able to move to the hypoallergenic feed, which is something unique that no other farmer is doing that I wanted to try. So yeah, we, we still have probably the best eggs on the market right now, just as they are. But if the volume's really high and we're selling a lot, then I, I might be able to convince the farmer to switch over to the hypoallergenic feed for both the eggs and the chicken. So look, look I do a decent amount of volume. It's, it's like, a, it's, I'm like between a small business and a large business, but you know, th these people are dealing with very, very large volumes of product for supermarket chains and distributors. So for me to try to like get in there with them is, is, is nearly uh, impossible. That's why we're having such a hard time with some supply stuff. But hopefully that works out. And look, guys, like as much as, as my goal is to, you know, improve the health of as, as many people as possible, if I'm going to completely lose my mind and destroy my health and just be, be unhappy doing it with all the business stuff. It's just, you know, I could literally just lay on a beach the rest of my life, not do YouTube, not worry about any of this stuff, but you know, everything in life, you have the right decision and the wrong decision. And if I'm at a point where I'm deciding, do I stick it out and try to help people and improve their health and provide food quality that no one else has, or do I disappear to a beach in Colombia? We know which one's the right decision and which one's the wrong decision. It's just at what point do you just say, screw it and take the wrong decision. So we'll see how it goes. I keep saying that. We'll see how it goes over the next three months. I've been saying that for two years and I should just start swimming down the Hudson River to uh, see if I can reach the Panama Canal. Anyway, thank you guys for joining me. We have the eggs available now, frankietoonrangemeat.com. I'll have them up on the website. By the time this video is posted again, please order them separately. So check out frank stefancom if you wanna see Frankie's syringe meat as well as the other businesses I mentioned in this video, guys. But you could also please drop a like on the video, leave a comment down below, subscribe so that YouTube can unsubscribe you next week, and be sure to check that notification bell so they don't notify you of my videos. And I, I mean, I don't like bringing it up, but you know, when these other people copy my products and plagiarize my ideas and don't give me credit and try to make money, those people are the reason you guys have waited two years for eggs. Those people are the reason I can't give you guys dairy. Those people are the reason I don't have all of the quality products I want. And those people that aren't crediting me, that are trying to make money themselves on their own products, are partially the reason I don't have everything myself. So go figure.